lift those two hands up to heaven and bless his holy name for the opportunity to be in his presence in the name of Jesus lift up those two hands everyone and bless the name of the Lord again for another day a brand new day a glorious day we all slept and awoke because the Lord sustained us in Jesus precious name we have given thanks Amen. every encounter with the truth supernaturally opens a new chapter to his beneficiary there is no genuine encounter with God that leaves a man where he met him Abraham had an encounter at 75 it brought greatness out of him. Mm. Moses had an encounter at 80. He became, as it were, an eternal phenomenon. Gideon had no background to write to me about. He belonged to the order of the, the least. Had an encounter and delivered Israel to the Median Nonsense as one man. Every genuine encounter with God opens a new chapter to its beneficiary. No one in this service will live without a definite, notable, remarkable encounter with God. Amen. And the Lord appeared unto Samuel as Shiloh by his word. God is in his word. God and his word are one. In the beginning was the word. The word was it God and the word was God. So God dwells in his word. So every encounter with God, with the word, is an encounter with God. And it changes people's position. He says, set yourself and you will see. So it's a matter of you longing for and setting yourself to see. I pray that no one leaves the service, all of us connecting online from around the world without a definite, notable, landmark order of encounter. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord Jesus, let your word go forth on him that today. Amen. Let no one under the sound of my voice live without an encounter with you. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. It's my year of breaking limits. That is also my portion. Give Jesus a big hand and get seated, please. An encounter comes with a desire. A desire graduates into a crave. A crave graduates into desperation. I must see Jesus. Zacchaeus said. He was very small in stature. <laughs> he said, wherever he is, I must see him. He said, I'm sure he will pass through here. So he went and climbed the tree. Did he see him or not? You can't be desperate for an encounter and not have one. He saw him. Did I hear Jesus in town? They said, yes. Take me there. I can't keep this bed any longer. The God that says, you know, there is no space. He said, is there a roof? Tear the roof. We'll pay for that later. And they let him down. Jesus saw their faith. They said, what? Thy sins are forgiven thee. Rise up, take your bed. And that was the end of it.
If there's any month when you need an encounter with God, it's this month because we are discussing what you and I need to remain in command of the issues of life. It's a month of um, for signs and wonders. You can't gain command of signs and wonders and be stranded and be afflicted and be tormented. No. We begin our series for our Sunday services today captioned Commanding the Supernatural. Commanding the Supernatural. Is a command? Can you command? Yes. Ask me of things concerning my sons. And concerning the work of my hand, command ye me. Isaiah 45 verse 11. Ask me of things to come concerning my sons. And concerning the works of my hand, command ye me. And God was working with them, confirming the world with signs following. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. So signs and wonders are the workings of his hand. And he said, concerning the works of my hand, command ye me. Command ye me. I'm giving you the right to command me. Concerning the works of my hand, command ye me. Someone met me and he said, I cannot have HIV as if I gave it to him. He was violent. And I said, you don't have HIV. Yes, sir. Because you cannot have HIV. Went back for a checkup, HIV negative. Yes. A man that was impotent came and met me. And I said, before you get to the gate of Canaan, you will return. He ran back. Thank God. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Was made whole supernaturally by commanding the supernatural. Somebody is going to gain command today. Amen. Someone is gaining command today. Amen. So these are not uh, statements to excite somebody. They are Biblical rooted statement commanding the supernatural. Ask me of things to come concerning my sons and concerning the works of my hand, commanding me. The supernatural is the natural estate of the believer. The Lord himself shall give you a sign. A virgin shall conceive and bring forth a son, and you call his name Emmanuel. Matthew 1.23 came to pass. Amen. So Jesus came down here as a sign. And as my father has sent me, so send I you. So every child of God is redeemed a sign and a wonder to his world. But we command signs by the word. Because every sign and wonder is God confirming his word. So we must have his word to be in command of signs and wonders. We must have his word to be in command of signs and wonders.
But the knowledge of who we are is what the time is what you can do. And who we are is as contained in scriptures. For that's the bank of God's plan and purpose for the redeemed. Isaiah 29 verse 11. A division of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is seed, which men gave to the one that is knowledge, saying, read this, I pray this, said, I cannot because it is seed. And he gave it to one that is not learned. Read this, I pray. He said, I'm not learned. So we discover the world concerning who we are. We discover who we are from the world. From the world. One, we discover here that we are redeemed as spirit beings. In human flesh. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. No spiritual spirit. Very simple. God is a spirit. And if you are redeemed as children of God and light begets light, then we are spirit. John chapter 4 verse 24. God is a spirit and they that worship must worship him in spirit and in truth. And that came true very cleanly from Acts chapter 14 verse 11. The gods have come down to us in the likeness of man. In the likeness of man. We need that perspective to be in command of the supernatural. We were natural beings. Before salvation. After salvation we became spirit beings in human flesh. It takes knowing who we are to stand our ground against the enemy. Against the tormentor of lives. Against the one that holds humanity captive. We need that knowledge of who we are. You saw Jesus. All through the book of John. Declaring who he was. I am the light of the world. I am the resurrection and the life. The father judged no man has committed all judgment to the son. As the father has life in himself. So has he given his son to have life in himself. And as father quickened whom he will, so the son also quickened whom he wills. I mean, I am from above, John 8 23. You are from beneath. That's the difference. You find I am, I am, I am, just declaring who he was. It takes that to be in command. Of the supernatural. The 
They asked John, who are thou? John chapter 1 verse 19 to 21, who are thou? We need the knowledge of who we are. We need the knowledge of who we are. Who are thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I'm not the Christ. And they asked him, what then? Are thou Elias? And he said, I'm not. Are thou that prophet? And he answered, no. And they said unto him, but who are thou? That we may give answer to them that sent us. What says thou of thyself? And he said, I'm the voice of one that crying, crying in the wilderness. Make sure the way of the Lord. As said prophet Isaiah. Amen. He found who he was from the world. He found who he was from the world. So you must know what to say of yourself. Otherwise, you can never gain command over sickness, over disease, over breakdowns, over regrets, over failure, over defeat. You can't gain command without knowing who you are in redemption. I can't forget my encounter through the ministry of Smith Wigglesworth in 1979 from a book um, that captured one of his testimonies. And that just blew up my understanding of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 5. We were in trespasses. By grace we are saved and raised us together with him and made us to sit together with him in heavenly places. Hey! So I'm seated in heavenly places. Where is that located? John 1, 20. The Bible said, which he wrote in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set on his own right hand in heavenly places. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named. Not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. I mean, something torn supernaturally in me. I'm seated above the tormentors of life. Far above where the wicked dwells. Far above where the enemy torment and afflict. Far above the realm of failures, defeat and breakdowns. They turned everything in me around. Knowing who we are is fundamental in determining what we can command. Jesus travailed as the lamp of God, but prevailed as the lion of God. Praise God. He said, when I see the travail of the soul, I shall be satisfied. Jesus traveled to the cross. As he shipped to the slaughter, he opened not his mouth. But in Revelation 5, verse 5 and 6. And I wept much. And one of the elders said to me, Weep not, for the lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seas thereof. Now, it travailed as a sheep, but prevailed as a lion. And the kingdom of God suffers violence, the violent take it by force. So, we have that lion nature in us, having been sent as the Father has sent him. And we can only prevail when we turn on that lion nature. Your healing and my healing is settled in heaven. But it takes the violence of a lion to actualize it. Amen. Amen. You saw the lion in this man by illustration, Bartimaeus. Keep quiet. Is that quiet? Jesus! He prevailed. He prevailed. You saw the lion in that paralytic man. Take me through the roof. How they got the rope? How they organize? You can take me. This man, if he's inside that place, we are meeting him today. He prevailed. 
Your travails are over. Amen. Your travails are over. Amen. Your travails are over. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. It takes the power of the world to command the supernatural. The rod in the hand of Moses is the word in the figure. Thou shalt take this rod in thy hand wherewith thou shalt do signs or command signs. Jesus is the rod that came out of the stem of Jesus. Isaiah 11 verse 1. And Jesus is the living word of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we behold his glory. As that of the only begotten son of the father. Full of grace and truth. In the beginning was the word. The word was God. The word was God. And all things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. And the word became flesh. And his name Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. How do I say that? Because. You saw the seven spirits of God resting upon that prophetic rod in Isaiah chapter 11. And the spirit of the Lord shall be upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Those are the seven spirits of God. And we saw Jesus, the carrier of the seven spirits of God. In the Revelation chapter 5 and verse 6, and I beheld and lo in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts in the midst of the elders. Stood the lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. That implies, thou shalt take this word in thy hand, wherewith thou shalt do signs. It is the word in your hand that puts you and me in command of signs and wonders. It's not something you beg for. It's something you discover and engage with. So the word you discover, the word I discover and engage with is what puts me in command of signs and wonders. It is by the word we command supernatural solutions to the issues of life. In the beginning was the word, I mean, in the, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth became void. Darkness was upon the deep, was without form. And God came with the word of command. Let there be light. There was light. The earth I was once without form and void is now the earth that is full of treasures. As the world created what God intends. Now the earth is a lot of the fullness thereof. And the fullness thereof. It was once without form and void. And God said, and God said, and God said. And we are told in verse 31, and God saw everything that God said. And behold, it was very good. And God saw everything God said. God saw everything God said. God saw. God's word carries creative power. Amen. Amen. Every time we engage with the word in faith, our desires are created. Every time we engage with the word in faith, solutions are born. Everything God said, God saw. That's how creative the word is.
It is the spirit that quickens, he said. The flesh profits nothing. The word that has spoken to you, they are spirit and they are life. So the word carries quickening power. That's able to quicken everything dying or dead in and around us back to life. It carries quickening power. John 6, 63. We saw that in Job chapter 33 and verse 21 to 25. It's a situation of a terminal disease. His flesh is consumed the way that it cannot be seen. And his bones that were not seen, they stick out. Now, yea, his soul dread near to the grave and his life to the destroyer. If there be a messenger with him, that is the word. An interpreter of the truth. One among a thousand to show unto man his uprightness. Then God be gracious to him and will say, deliver him from going out to the pit and found a ransom. And what happens? And his flesh shall be fresher than a child. He shall return to the days of his youth. Somebody's having an encounter here today Amen. that will restore you back to the days of your youth. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. That will restore you back to the days of your youth. Your flesh shall become fresher than that of a child. Amen. And you shall return back to the days of your youth. Amen. That dryness in your life is over today. Amen. By the power of the world. Amen. By the power of the world. In the name of Jesus. Amen. It is the world we engage with believing that God confirms into signs and wonders. They went forth preaching the word and God was working with them with signs following. Confirming the word. Confirming the word. Confirming the word with signs following. It came unto him, the word came, and they received him up. But as many as received him, John 1, 12, to them gave you power to manifest as sons of God. So it is the word we receive and believe that empowers us to manifest as sons of God. To manifest as sons of God. The word we receive and believe is what empowers us to manifest as sons of God. One of our daughters in the Lord here was going to walk and then had a cry. A child just died. Now, there is not that it's a relation, not that he knows them. He stood and went straight to the place and anointed the dead in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and the dead jumped back to life. Yes. Now, she could do that because she received the word concerning the efficacy of the mystery of the anointing oil and she believed it and still them to manifest as a son of God. So the word we receive and believe is what empowers us to manifest as sons of God. So important. As many as received, so it covers everybody. As many as received him, to them gave him power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. As many. So you are living this service today manifesting as a bona fide son of God. Amen. Because he said to you and me concerning things to come about my sons and concerning the works of my heart command ye me so whatever God is up to is at your command. Mm. But you need the word to command the acts of God. He made his ways known unto Moses. And his acts manifested to the children of Israel. Moses knew what to do. And doing what to do resulted in signs and wonders.
among others. The word we receive and believe carries the power to kill and make whole. Carries the power to kill and make whole. He sent his word and it healed them. And the word delivered them out of all their disruptions. God is not coming to heal you. He already healed. Amen. Amen. The same day the price was paid for your sin and my sin, the price was totally paid for your health and vitality. Amen. By stripes you are healed. And then in first Peter chapter 2 verse 24, he said, by whose stripes you why? It's a past tense event. It already happened. It's not coming to happen. Himself took our infirmity. Not that it's coming in the case he forgets or somebody comes along the way and won't let him get there on time. That it might be free, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses. You have been bought with a price. 1 Corinthians 6.20 Therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit which are the Lord. So whatever does not glorify God in your body is illegal. The price for your wholeness has been wholly paid. The price for your total health has been fully paid. All you need is Rise up to the occasion and take it by force. By force. The force of faith. This price has been paid. It's my right. Now, you don't have to pay for goods in the shopping mall. Whoever pays for it, just let it be paid for. They can't stop you with your receipt. No. They say, why? You are not the one that pay for it. What concerns them? It has been paid for. Jesus already paid for your total health and my total health. We have the legal right to pass through security and go home with it. Now, no matter what affliction anyone may be bearing on his or her body, you are walking out of this service today free at last. Amen. He was wounded for us to live a wound-free life. He was buffeted with 39 stripes, man. Glory to God. For us to live a buffet-free life, an afflicted-free life, it was a gruesome price paid. When he took the place of Barabbas and death, he went home free. He took your place in sickness. It's your right to go home free. Amen. You are going home free today. Amen. And by your hand, many will walk into liberty. Amen. You are going home free from here. Amen. I mean, Jesus went to the cross. Barabbas went back home to a party. Hallelujah. Why? Somebody took his place. In death, the same person took your place and my place in sickness. Hallelujah. It's your turn to walk into liberty. Amen. From now, it shall be celebration Ooh. after celebration. Amen. The curse of untimely death is broken in anyone's family. Amen. The threat of death on anyone's life under the sound of my voice is crushed today. Amen. That I saw and I said, yeah, I can never be sick. Because somebody already took sickness away from me before I was born. I stepped into that inheritance at redemption. So it's now my leg right to live a sickness-free life because somebody took my place in sickness. 
Now, in the name of Jesus, because what I say to one, I say to all. In the name of Jesus Christ, it was by the discovery of Sweet Wiggles' word that I found my authority over all devils. Amen. Amen. So we are still seeing light through the light that I showed to others. He said, Thou art the fountain of life. In thy light shall we see light. In thy light shall we see light. You don't go to manufacture a car before you ride one. You go to a shop and buy from those who struggle to manufacture it. You pay for their sweat and collect your car. Now imagine if you have to learn how to sew a suit before you wear one. You will wear leaves. <laughs> Amen. It's done. So you go pick it up. And this is at the cost of faith. At the cost of what? Faith. Do you believe that I, the son of man, am able to do it? Say, yeah, Lord, okay, according to your faith. So you get it according to your faith. And your faith is according to your insight. For faith comes by hearing and understanding the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and understanding the word of God. Somebody's liberty is established. The more insight, therefore, that we gain in the world, the higher our level of command of the supernatural. The greater the insight we gain. Now, in Ephesians chapter 3, very interesting, verse 1 to 5, Paul writing, he said, for this cause I pour the prison of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles. If you have Heart of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me towards you. How that by revelation. What? He made known unto me the mystery. As I wrote afore in few words. <laughs> that whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. So you find the depth from where I was operating from. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, verse 8. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Amen. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world has been hidden God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. Amen. To the internet now, unto the principles and powers in heavenly places, might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Amen. 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 <laughs> Verse 11. Go to verse 11, please. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. According to the eternal purpose of God, which He purposed in Christ Jesus. That is, we gain authority over principalities and powers by depth of insight. What do I call it? Depth of insight. A number of us just know the principles of the world. We don't, we have not been able to assess the mysteries of the kingdom. But unto us is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Amen. It's not about the principles. It's assessing the mystery. The mystery implies the hidden secrets of God. As embedded in scriptures. That's where Paul was coming from. And we saw that manifestation in Acts chapter 14. The people exclaimed, the gods are come down to us in the likeness of man. In verse 15 to 19, they stoned Paul to death. Having stoned Paul, they drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. No, they came to kill him, so they knew he was dead. You can't suppose. They knew he was dead. Amen. And as disciples stood round about him, he rose up. He rose up means that he was dead. He rose up and came into the city. Now I'm still here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 
That's from the depth from where it was operated. And then we saw him also in Acts chapter 19, verse 11 and 12, how God wrote special miracles by the hand of Paul. So the anchors and nephrons were taken from him to them that were sick. The disease is departed from them and evil spirits went out of them. Praise God. He was operating from a depth of mystery. Deep insight in the world. And then we saw in Acts 27 and verse 25 to 27 after they escaped from the hazard of the sheep. In verse 27 the people looked at him a long way. Please go to that verse for me. And when they supposed for him to have been swollen But after they had looked a great deal and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said he was a God. He just shook the venomous viper into the fire and felt no harm. They live in that highland where you are beaten with that snake, you are gone. He shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. And when they have looked for a long while and waiting for him to be fallen and dead. Amen. They change their mind. Well, you are returning from this service where your mockers will change their mind. Amen. Because you are gaining command over situations around you that make them ask, where is your God? Nobody will ask you this year and anymore, where is your God? Amen. It's not just believing and receiving the word, but declaring the word. Thou hearest the sound thereof. But can't tell where it's coming from or where it's going. And so it's everyone that is born of the Spirit. It is the sound we make that determines the signs we command. Nothing works in Nigeria and then you have finished yourself. Nothing works. I can't see a future in my future. Then you have destroyed your future. For you shall have whatsoever you say. So suffer not your mouth to cause your flesh to sin. Neither say that before an angel was an error. But why should God be angry with you and destroy the works of thy hand? Ecclesiastes 5 and verse 6. So it is what you say today that you see tomorrow. Mm. God cannot confirm what he will not declare. They were speaking boldly, and God was giving witness to all his grace by commanding signs and done, granting signs and wonders to be done by their hand. It is the declarations we make that determines the confirmations we experience. God will never confirm what you and I will not declare. As long as you keep saying, I am sick, I am sick, I am sick, you begin to see sickness after sickness. No, it took my infirmity. I cannot be sick. He already fully paid for it. My body and spirit must glorify God. It is what the sound we make that determines the size we command. It is the sign, the sign we make that determines the signs we command. You can't walk in the supernatural without engaging the power of the tongue. You can't. God will never confirm, he can never confirm what a man will not declare. You are ashamed to declare my word, I'll be ashamed to confirm it in your life. Not just declaration, bold declaration. Bold declaration. Yeah, I can never be poor. And he's here today. Yeah, I can never be sick. It's happening. Not 10 years, not 20, not 30, not 40. Hallelujah. Has God changed? No. 
Somebody's story is changing. Amen. Right now. Amen. You are that one, let me hear your loudest. Amen. Amen. Lift up your right hand. Has anything dropped for you today? Come on now, give God thanks for it. Has any word dropped for you today? Give him thanks for it. Your level of command has changed. Your level of command of the supernatural has changed. Your level of command of the supernatural has changed. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Well, there are people under the sound of my voice across the nations of the earth today that are not born again yet. We'll be going into partaking of the communion, but I want to be a part of it. Jesus never served the communion to the multitudes. He served the communion only to the disciples. Only to the disciples. Only to the disciples. So you have to become a child of God before you can experience the wonders on the communion table. Let me show you what it is in there. It is one of the mysteries of the New Testament that addresses the three components of man. The spirit, the soul, and the body. You know, man is a three in one personality. It's a spirit, he has a soul, and he lives in a body. First Thessalonians 5:23. Now, the communion is the mystery of the flesh and the blood of Jesus. the blood has access to the spirit. How much more shall the blood of Jesus purge our conscience from dead works to serve the living God? It takes the blood to heal the spirit. Sin is a sickness of the spirit. It takes the blood to secure the healing of our spirit man. We also know that the life of the flesh is in the blood. And Jesus said, this is my blood. And you do blood screening to find out what is wrong with a man's body. So when you have this transfusion of the blood of Jesus, you live like him supernaturally. You live like him super because the life of the flesh is in the blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. When people misbehave in my place, they say it is in his blood. If you find them beating his wife day and night, you know a jail is in his blood. So everybody's lifestyle is trackable in his blood. So when we partake of the communion, it cleanses our spirit man from every form of spiritual defilement. Now, in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of the Lord. Only the blood can ascend the spirit man. So as we partake of this blood today, every battle against your living to please God is declared one. Everything that 
may make God turn his back on anyone is washed away. Amen. Jesus said, which of you convinces me of sin? I therefore decree that every defilement of our spirit man that is able to make God turn his back on us be washed away today. Amen. In the name of Jesus. 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 Amen. Number two, the soul which comprises of man's will, intellect, and emotions. He gave them the bread. And what happens? Their eyes were open. Luke 24, verse 30 and 31. He broke the bread and blessed it and gave it to them. And what happens? And their eyes were open and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. Every challenge in any area of one's mind, will, and emotions is declared healed today. Amen. Every issue with loss of memory is cleared off today. Amen. Every issue of confusion in one's journey is over today. Amen. He gave them the bread and their eyes were open. Remember? Jesus is the wisdom and the power of God. This is my flesh. So whatever makes me up is here. This is my flesh. This is my flesh. And it's the wisdom and the power of God. So we are entitled to a sound mind. Sound mind. Sound mind. Sound mind. They began to exclaim, what wisdom is this has given to him? Well, everyone carrying a question mark either to that question mark is turned to exclamation mark. Amen. Matthew 13 verse 54. From whence has this man this wisdom and these mighty works? I release you by the encounter from this table today to a world of mighty works. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. And then, of course, the body, which is what we all have been playing, we have been taking advantage of. Um, as the living Father has said, and I live like the Father, even he that eateth me shall live like me, like me, like me. Full of life, full of health and vitality, shall live like me. Now, your Father did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. How dead were they? Psalm 105 verse 37. The Bible said, He brought them forth also with silver and gold. And there was not one feeble person among their tribes. Forty years. There was not one feeble person. And he said, the community is superior to that. That means all the days of your life, you won't know feebleness. Amen. Feebleness means weakness. Not being able to do what others are doing. Not being able to do what you are created to do. He said, your father did eat man in the wilderness and are dead. He that eateth this bread shall live forever. As you partake of this communion today, everything dying or dead in your body bounces back to life. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. Amen. The Bible said their feet were not swollen these 40 years. There was no ailment. Their raiment waxed not old upon them, neither did thy foot swell these 40 years. Somebody is receiving that. Amen. The next 40 years of your life you won't know ordinary swelling. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 4. You won't know anything called swelling. You won't suffer headache. Amen. 
Amen. You won't suffer stomachache. Amen. The man, Kenneth Hagen, shared his testimony at a point that for 61 years, he doesn't know how headache feels. For 61 years, he didn't know how headache feels. For 61 years, he didn't know how headache felt. 61 years. God never lies. It's your turn. It's your turn. It's your turn. Now, let me conclude by saying, the communion is ordained to offer a threefold blessing. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to 30, but let's go straight to 30. He said, for this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep or die. Can I hear your amen? amen. Now, it's, it was unveiling the mission of the communion from verse 23. And he said, when you take it, what, when you take it unworthily, you are weak, you are sickly, and you suffer untimely death. But when you take it in faith, understanding what it carries, what that means is this. You enjoy strength, a sickness-free life, and longevity to match. Amen. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, weakness is over in your life today. Amen. Sickness is over in your life today. Amen. A long life, a good old age becomes your portion. Amen. In the name of Jesus. A good old age becomes your portion. Amen. Give the Lord praise, everybody. <laughs> Very quickly, you'd like me to pray with you so you can be a bona fide partaker of this ministry today by turning your life over to Jesus. I'm more than willing to do that right now. Wherever you are, please lift up your right hand. Or you want to dedicate your life to Christ, I'd like to pray with you also so that you can enjoy the fullness of the blessings that this table contains. And much more importantly, you make heaven at the end of your journey. Would you lift up your right hand wherever you may be? You'd like me to pray with you to be saved. And pray this prayer after me, saying, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus forgive, me forgive me all my sins, all my sins. and wash me wash with your blood. With your blood. I, believe I believe you died for me, died for me. on the third day you rose, you rose again that I may be justified. Right now, right now I, believe I believe my sins are now forgiven. Are now forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. I'm, by your blood. I'm, saved. I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm, born again. I'm restored back to the faith. I am now a child of God. Thank you, Jesus, Amen. for saving my soul. Saving my soul. Amen. Amen. Now, be blessed of the Lord Amen. in the name of Jesus. I decree grace upon your life to live the overcomer's life. Amen. Sin shall no more have dominion over you. Amen. You will make heaven at the end of your journey. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You have come on this awesome day. Sickness and disease will no longer hang on your life. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please share.